Hey everybody, Tall Family Films here. Today we are working on a very common problem on Ford Rangers. This one happens to be a 1991 XLT. Um, it wasn't starting. It would crank, but it wouldn't actually turn over. So we have to determine, and this is the same for any car. Do we have fuel and do we have spark? Um, the first thing we'll talk about in this car is fuel. So easy way to know if you're getting fuel is down in here you should see a little Schrader valve. It looks like that. It looks like a bicycle tire. And you need to pull that off, stick a little pick tool down in there. If fuel sprays out, then you have fuel. So fuel's not your problem. But let's assume that there is no fuel coming out. Then the next thing we need to know is what's happening as far as fuel goes inside. Ford, Ford's kind of unique in this respect. They have this little emergency shutoff so that if you had an accident, um, the fuel would, or the electricity to the fuel pump would stop. And the way that happens is through this switch. So if you look, you see that red line up there? Um, that red line is indicating like danger fuel is flowing, okay? So if you don't see the red line, there's a button on the top of this and you need to push it back down to reset it. If you want to test to see, if let's say the button's red like mine, which it was, and it's still not working, then you should pull this out put a voltmeter on this green or and then test uh, put it to ground put the other side of the voltmeter to ground and make sure you're getting 12 volts when you very first turn the key on you may see it drop back to six volts afterwards but if you're only getting six volts at all then that means this pink wire is going back to the fuel pump itself which means your fuel pump is never getting 12 volts so it's not priming and you know it's you're not getting fuel you can actually take a paper clip wire these two terminals together Make sure that there's three holes, but only two wires. So it's the two left ones if you're looking at it like this. So make sure that you um, just jumper those two and that eliminates the switch. So you don't need the switch if you're testing stuff. Let's assume that you're only getting six volts. So something's wrong with the wiring. Probably going to be this relay right here. This relay might be hidden up underneath this box. So there's a way to test that relay. I'll put a video to that in the description. Um, there is something called the EEC port. This is like early OBD. So uh, there's lots of videos on YouTube that tell you how to diagnose a problem with this. You have to use this little jumper wire on the side too. And, a, and you paper clip these two together or put a wire in them. Um, there's lots of, it'll give you some codes using the check engine light by, you know, the number of flashes and then you go look up the code. So that might help you. All right, let's assume that you now have fuel. And in my case, I didn't have fuel and I thought that was my problem. And by some amazing coincidence, um, after fixing the fuel problem, it still wouldn't start. So now we need to look at spark. Easiest way to know, is it fuel or is it spark? Undo the, um, forgetting the name here at the moment, but undo this air connector off of this, I mean, off of the air intake of the engine, spray some throttle body. That's the word I was looking for. Um, spray some starter fluid into the throttle body and go start the car. If it starts up and it just runs for a couple seconds and turns off, you have spark. In my case, I did not. It would not run. So, easiest thing to, to figure out if, um, well, the easiest thing to replace in this to start your troubleshooting uh, would be to take, go to Harbor Freight, or you can get them on Amazon, a spark plug test tool. You can put this in line on any spark plug and watch the spark. In my case, I was watching it spark just one time when I would try to start the car. You can also put it here between the ignition coil and the distributor. And in my case, I was only getting one spark. We'll talk about my solution in just a second. But what your, your order of troubleshooting should be, this is the ignition coil. It's very cheap. It's unlikely to fail. It could. Next would be the computer. In my case, this little computer, it's called a TFI, I think or engine control module or something like that. Um, it is, it's in a little heat sink. You can see that back in there. Um, easy to replace, about $30, and you can determine if that's the problem. That was not my problem. This may not be here. It might be here. And if it's not there, then it's actually on the side of the distributor down here. So it is, it is way hidden down in there. All right, so um, in my case, I replaced the computer and it was uh, not, still not starting. 
Um, next, I replace the rotor because it's easy. I, you literally just take two screws off the top of this distributor cap and you pull it up and you pull the two, um, pull, pull the two screws out, pull the top of the distributor off and you'll see the rotor sitting in there it literally just pulls up with two fingers so we tried that that did not work so at this point we pretty much knew we were going after the pickup coil which is inside here i've got another video i'll show you that shows you a picture of uh, the shaft when you take the whole thing out um, but briefly there is a get a light on this hold on here Well, I wish I, okay, so do you see that bolt right there? I'm gonna, there's a 10 millimeter bolt. You need to pull that bolt out. There's a washer attached to it. Once you do that, the entire shaft for the distributor will all come out. And I'll show you a, a video of what that looks like in the description. Um, you pull the whole shaft out and then you have to replace the pickup coil. My other video will show you kind of how to get at it. But the pickup coil looks like this. This was my problem. You can see it's four pins. I did put a voltmeter on the old one and the new one, and I was getting extremely different ohms when the meter was set to 20K. Um, so I knew this was the problem, and sure enough, we replaced that and it fired right up. If this video has helped you, you can really help me by subscribing to my channel and giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you very much.